Hello everyone, welcome back. I know it's been a little while since I did anything, but uh, it's been a busy spring so far. So I wanted to show you guys um, something that I've been working on uh, that's kind of fun. These are my coffee dyed stencil papers. So what I did is, I'll show you how I made these. Um, so I've got, my favorite ones are these full page ones like this that I've been making. Um, but I also have a bunch where I did, you know, half a page one way and half a page the other so that I can fold it uh, into a journal like that and have half of it look like that and the other half look like that. Um, again, here's another half one. Uh, I also did some of these smaller versions where it's just a half a page done in like that and then I can use it in a small journal. I can fold it in half like this and have half the flower on each side. Uh, here's another one. There's another one. So yeah, I've got lots of these that I've been working on and making. So I wanted to just kind of show you guys how I do that. <clears throat> uh, now you can just buy stencils. Uh, that's probably your easiest method is to just buy stencils. I'll just set those to the side. But I personally like to make my own stencils. So these are ones that I've made. I've got this one here. Okay, so I'll set this piece of paper down here so you can actually see what the stencils look like. So yeah, there's that one. Uh, these are just all different little ones that I've made. And I'm hoping to eventually get these, get some of my designs uh, created into, a, into an actual um, into actual stencils to sell but right now this is what I've got that one this is that one with just the leaves and then I've got these big ones so this was my flower one hi Raven you guys stay back buddy and then I did this big flower one here as well so baby come on you go get down buddy you can see up here so I wanted to show you how I make the stencils and then I was going to show you how I do the coffee dyeing so what I use, what I like to use for these, is I buy these um, cheap at like Walmart or whatever. These are, they're twin pocket portfolios. I'll put a link to where you can get them on Amazon and that kind of thing. Um, we call them, up here in Canada, we always called them duo tangs or report folders. But anyway, um, twin pocket portfolio is what this one is actually called. And I take these because they're they're flexible, but they're also uh, nice plastic. Now the black one is maybe a little bit harder to use um, unless you're just freehanding everything because you can't really see what you're putting on it when you draw the thing. So um, these blue ones are quite nice for that. You can draw on them and still kind of see it. Um, if you're going to use ink, uh, the ink pens tend to be, uh, they tend to smudge. Um, I like to actually use pencil on mine uh, for doing the little sketch. The other thing that I was going to try that I haven't tried yet is this is a plastic piece from a binder um, that I took apart when I was recovering a binder with something else. So that's another one that I'm going to try at some point. It's quite a lot more flexible than this though, so I don't know if I'm going to like it so much. But this is the one that I prefer to use. So, the first thing I do, this will be a little bit bigger than a sheet of paper, uh, as you can see. So, if you do go all the way to the edge of it, it's going to um, go over the edge of your paper when you're, when you're uh, doing the stencil. And that's one thing I found with, like, this one here, because it goes over the edge, uh, that made it so that the stencil itself went right over the edges here it wasn't it wasn't centered on the paper um but if you want to make it the exact size you can always cut it to an exact size or just mark on it where the exact size is now this one here because it has this piece still on it and everything i think i'm going to actually set this paper right here to mark it and then i'm going to do it this way going to do this. Take my knife and cut along here to remove that piece there. And then 
I can do the same thing with the top part here to just cut it down to the right size. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep that part and I'm gonna cut off this bottom part because that's where the inside of that folder had been. And that way this will be the exact size of a piece of paper. Okay, so now I have this piece that's the size of a piece of paper. And so I'm just gonna sketch on it. Now I've been doing some, uh, I've been doing mostly uh, like botanical type ones lately. So, but I was kind of thinking I might do something that's a little bit like a, like some of the rose mauling that I've done in the past. So I'm gonna put um, a little rose mauling flower down here. So, and I'll show you what rose mauling is. Um, quite a few here. Grab this one. So this is the rose mauling that I have done in the past. It's actually a Norwegian folk art. Um, this is a type called telemark rose mauling. And so I'm going to do something just kind of loosely based off of that on this sheet here. Um, because I, uh, I really I really like that and so I want to do something kind of loosely based off of that. It's obviously not going to be exactly like this because um, you have to be able to cut out the stencil. But so I'm just going to set that to the side to help me. So I think I'm going to put a flower down here. Now this is going to probably be hard for you to see but I'm going to just sketch it. So I'll probably um fast forward through most of this, but I'm going to just sketch it out and then I'll show you uh, what else I'm doing. So Okay, so that's my basic outline that I'm going to do. I don't know if you can actually even see that. I usually just do like a rough outline because of that's the way I am because being an artist and I just like to do a rough outline. Okay, so then what I do is I take this here. This is an X-Acto knife. It's similar to these ones, except that it's a tiny little craft one, as you can see. And so I like to use that to do my cutting. So that's what I'm going to do. And the biggest thing, I'll, I'll fast forward through this to show you, but the biggest thing that you have to watch for when you're doing any kind of a stencil cutout is that you leave your little pieces of attachment. So for example, like this bit here where I've got a petal and I've got crisscrosses in it, one thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make sure that I leave attachments so that the crisscrosses don't all disappear. So I'll just kind of show you that one. So what I'm going to do is inside each of these crisscrosses, I'm going to cut out a square, basically. You have to be a little bit careful because you are using a knife. And I'm using uh, one of these self-healing mats. I'll put that on the down in the description as well, so that you can cut without wrecking your desk. But you see there, I cut out a little square, and then I'm going to cut out next to it another little square. But I, I'm leaving those attachment spaces between. And it might take you a few times of doing it before you kind of get the feel for uh, what areas you can take out and what areas you have to leave. But eventually, after you make enough mistakes, you learn. And being that this is hand cut, it's not going to look as perfect as, you know, a, a uh, machine cut one. But you can, if you take your time, you can really get 
quite a nice little design. So when I do my flower part here, because I want to cut out this flower part, so I'm going to do it in a few sections. So I'm going to do like, for example, this piece of the flower. But I don't want to just cut out the whole thing because if I do, then this intersection will disappear. So I'm going to leave a little space there of attachment. And then I'll do the next part. And that's one of the biggest things you got to remember when you're doing stenciling. See, so now no matter how much of this I cut out, that's still going to be attached there. So I'm just going to keep cutting this out and I'll uh, if I have anything more to say I'll I'll come and say it otherwise I'll zoom through this and then I can show you how I make it into a coffee stencil
All right, so I'm done. What I was going to do now, my phone did shut off um, tr right towards the end there. So there's a few little details that I put in uh, without it running, but you should have gotten the general idea. So I'll show you here. This is my finished stencil. Now, I do want to show you one thing, and that is that I had a spot here where it, where I accidentally cut across. And so I just wanted to show you what I do to fix that. And what I like to do is I take my Mod Podge. That's my favorite glue. And ugh, okay. deal with that. I will just take it and I will just ever so, I don't put too much on there, but I'll just take it and I'll paint over that spot with the Mod Podge. And then, now I don't want to have it sitting on this paper, obviously, because then the, the paper will get stuck. But what I'll do is I'll just put it down here and then I'm just going to put something a little bit heavy on top of it for a minute. And that should hold it down and keep it from, um, from having issues. So that's what I do there. So I'm going to take this over once that dries. I'm going to take this over uh, to my other counter and I'll show you how I do the actual coffee stenciling. Okay, now I apologize for a little bit of shadow because it is at night here. So... Um, I'm going to show you, so I have a spot on my counter here that, as you can see, I use. Um, if you don't want to get coffee stains on your counter, you can just put down paper towel or something, but this is not my cooking kitchen, this is my crafting area, so um, <clears throat> I will show you how I do this. So if I take computer paper, I'll do, and I'm going to do the new one, uh, and I'll do one of each of the other full page ones and we'll get them going. So when I'm making the coffee, what I do is I, I'll i make um, a little bit of the coffee and then, um, let me move some stuff around here. I'll make, uh, I'll make a pot of coffee and when there's just a little bit of coffee in the, uh, in the pot, so it's really strong, I take it out and I fill my coffee mug and that's how I make the coffee that I use for this. So now I'm going to have a problem here because those are going to be leveled up. I'll have to just lay them like this and I don't know if you'll be able to see the one on the far side but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. I'll put my newest one right in the middle. Okay so what I do is I take my coffee and I just have a little old paint container here and I pour some coffee in you can see that's nice strong dark coffee and I actually just have an old paintbrush that I use for this so I'll just pour some onto there and then I just spread it around and like I say if you don't want to get anything on your counter um, just or, or you can use a craft table or you can put down some paper towel or something but like I say this isn't my cooking counter this is my crafting area so I just use it for coffee and tea staining and stuff I try and spread it fairly evenly all over the paper and then <clears throat> I'll just take one of the stencils so for example this one here and I just lay it over it and I just kind of press it down and I leave it and let it dry and it's really interesting because what you'll see when I come back tomorrow and show you is that the coffee the dark parts go to the open spots and the rest of it stays a little bit lighter. It's all it's all coffee stained but it's not. So I put the uh, I spread it all, all over so the whole thing does get coffee stained but the dark parts that you'll see will go into the middle. So we'll take our or into the open spots. So we'll take our new stencil and I'll just lay that right on top there. And you can see this one actually fits the whole page. Just kind of spread it out a little bit. Make sure there's coffee everywhere. And then I'll just do this last one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'll do it anyway here and then we can look at it tomorrow.
and I'll put that stencil on it. No. There we go. All right, so, and now we will just let that sit and dry overnight, and we will come back in the morning and have a look at it. Okay, everybody, it's the next morning here now, and, well, it's actually afternoon, and I'm going to take these off and show them to you. So why don't we check out the new one first? So when I pull the stencil off, see it's dry, and so the stencil starts to lift up, and that's what you get, which is so beautiful. I just love this so much. And you'll see on the opposite side, it does come through a little bit on the opposite side too, not as, as strong, but didn't that turn out pretty? That's really nice. Okay, so let's check this one out. Yeah, here's my, there's that one. And then the other one that you maybe couldn't see as well, I'll just bring it over here. It is like that. So yeah, that's that's how it works, and I just oh, I love how that turned out. It's so beautiful. That turned out really well. Very happy with that. So yeah, that's how we make our uh, hi Raven. This is Raven coming to say hello again. Come here, buddy. You have to flip you upside down so you can say hi. Hi everyone, I'm Raven. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's how I make those. Uh, that's how I make my coffee stencils and uh, and how I actually cut out stencils from the plastic. I'm hoping to eventually um, get some of these actually made into stencils that people can buy because I know it is a lot of work um, and a lot of people like my designs, um, but I haven't haven't gotten there yet. So if you happen to know of a good place for making stencils, let me know at a decent price and I'll maybe look into that because, um, yeah, you know, I sped everything up for this, but honestly, this uh, took me over two hours to cut this stencil out. So um, if, you, uh, if you're if you not the kind of person who has that kind of time and patience, you'll want to use bought stencils. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you soon.